We have uh, further word now on this new development from Dallas. Let's go to Dallas and John Perryman. Russ, the latest information we have is that the Dallas City Police say they have a photograph of Oswald holding a rifle with a telescopic sight. The rifle resembles the weapon used to assassinate President John F. Kennedy. Uh, we don't know if it can be determined if this is the same rifle that was found in the warehouse where the assassin uh, shot the fatal bullets into the president. But uh, they do have uh, a photograph, they tell us, that shows Oswald holding a rifle as though aiming at something. When the picture was made, we don't know, but that is the latest information from the Dallas Police Department. Tom. Now, on the Oswald case itself, as the police in Dallas have disclosed the evidence in bits and pieces today, that evidence seems to come this way, comes together this way, that his wife said that he had owned a rifle similar to the one used by the sniper who shot President Kennedy. And uh, the police know that Oswald bought a rifle for $12.78, from a mail order house. The police say that that order was in Oswald's handwriting. The rifle was not in its accustomed place in a garage where he normally kept it. Police say that they found the death rifle in a room overlooking the assassination site. Then paraffin tests for gunpowder on his hands were positive, according to the police. And then, as Russ Ward reported only a moment ago, the police disclosed that they now had a photograph of Oswald posing with the rifle and with a pistol used to slay a pursuing, uh, pursuing policeman after the assassination. Now, on the legal ramifications of the Oswald case and uh, his forthcoming trial, I talked to an outstanding legal authority here in Washington. He made these points. He said that Oswald, of course, must be tried by a jury. And this poses a not-too-difficult problem because the judge can handle the matter of a prejudiced jury uh, by following one of three alternatives. First, he can switch the place of the trial, say, to Houston, if uh, he's convinced that Oswald could not get a fair trial in Dallas, and uh, or he can, number two, say that it will do no good to grant a change of venue. And then third, and uh, most likely, he could uh, grant a continuance of this trial under until the burning indignation dies down. And uh, if he follows that course, a conviction undoubtedly would stand up in any of those three cases. <coughs> However, the way the case is actually being handled in Dallas, as my legal friend sees it, is, is flirting with danger. There was, for instance, the statement by the Dallas police chief that Oswald's case is a cinch. Well, such statements like that might prejudice the trial in the eyes of some appeals court. Also, television film has been somewhat objectionable from a legal standpoint to a fair trial. Apparently, the only way to uh, move Oswald through the jail where he's being held jail. is to take him through a corridor, which, of course, is always jammed with cameramen and reporters. So the public, and of course the public of prospective jurors down in Dallas, they hear questions shouted at Oswald by the newsmen. They see him pushed and banged into the wall by the crowd. Now, there may be a parallel here developing to a Louisiana murder case in which the Supreme Court ruled last year. It seems that a Louisiana suspect in a murder case was filmed making a confession, a convention, a confession, I beg your pardon, making a confession. The film was then shown on television at least twice in Louisiana prior to the man's trial and conviction. The Supreme Court here in Washington then set aside the conviction on the basis of that televised confession. Now, my lawyer friend is convinced that the Dallas police are trying to wring a confession from Oswald, and if one is obtained, that there can be serious legal doubts about his confession and possibly create a case if he confesses and then is convicted that could be lay, uh, lead to an appeals court and possibly the case could end up in the United States Supreme Court as the Louisiana murder case did. Uh, Oswald now has been charged with attempting to kill Texas Governor John Connolly. Uh, this is the third charge brought against him, uh, that of murdering the president, of killing the Dallas policeman, and now with attempted murder on the life of Governor Connolly. Yes. Uh, this last charge uh, filed just this afternoon. 
Peter, did you have anything you can add to uh, this legal discussion we have going? Uh, not uh, uh, specifically, Russ. The, uh, we discussed this uh, earlier, uh, uh, Jim Hurlbut and I, and uh, the question arose without any answers, of course, neither of us being legal minds or legally trained, um, as to just uh, how much of a uh, fair trial, legally speaking, uh, this uh, fellow can expect because of the... Uh, the fact that our communications uh, today are what they are. Within minutes of, uh, uh, of what happens, as a matter of fact, even as it's happening, the people not only of the general area of Dallas but of the entire country are uh, watching it either live or momentarily. And uh, the question that I raised, and uh, Jim had no answer, nor do I, uh, from a legal standpoint, won't it be rather difficult to pick a jury which uh, Mr. Oswald's attorneys uh, feel are not uh, prejudiced in advance. It, it will be difficult. I would imagine it would be impossible because the name, the face, the voice, uh, and the story have been carried on all broadcast radio and television for many hours now. Well, this is a problem for legal minds, a very delicate one, and obviously... The, uh, the presiding judge in the case is going to have to be very careful because of all of the ramifications of appeals uh, and legal technicalities which would then ensue. Peter, on another subject, well, Peter, allow me to interrupt here. We have uh, Tom Perryman in Dallas on the line, and he has a continuation of this Lee Harvey Oswald story. We'll call in Tom right now. Thank you, Russ. Well, here in Dallas... We had a man, Travis Lynn, was down at the Dallas Police Headquarters, and he noted from the police blotter, the report sheet, that the police always fill out when there's a homicide or a theft or anything else in the police work nature. These reports are filled out on everything that takes place with all the facts. And we have a, a recording here, a minute and 27 seconds long, we want you to hear. It goes like this. Whenever an offense is committed in the city of Dallas, a homicide report is made out in case it is a murder, commonly called a beef sheet at police headquarters. There is now one on the assassination of President Kennedy. It reads in this fashion. Last name of person killed, Kennedy, John F., in parentheses, President of U.S., white male, 47, Washington, D.C., residence of person killed, White House. Serial number, uh, felony offense, 85950. Offense as reported, murder. Place of occurrence, Elm Street, approximately 150 feet west of Houston. Division, homicide and robbery, platoon 2, beat 101. Officers making reports, C.N. Doherty and H.H. H. Blessing, Dallas Police Department. Day of week, Friday, 11-22-63, at 12.30 p.m. Coroner notified, Joe B. Brown, pronounced dead by Dr. Kemp Clark at 1 p.m. Parkland Hospital. A description of the offense, the expired was riding in motorcade with wife and Governor John Connolly and his wife. Witnesses heard gunshot and saw expired son forward. More shots were heard and expired fell into wife's lap. Governor Connolly also was shot at this time. The car in which they were riding was escorted to Parkland Hospital by Dallas police officers. Person arrested, Lee Harvey Oswald, white male 25. Arresting officers, Lieutenant E. L. Cunningham and M. N. McDonald, patrolman. Charge, murder. And that's the official report from Dallas Police Headquarters. One final note, Russ. Oswald will be transferred to the county jail at 10 o'clock in the morning. It was thought he might be transferred tonight, but late word from police headquarters indicates he'll be taken over to the county jail just literally feet away from where the assassination took place at 10 o'clock in the morning. Tom, um, when Oswald was uh, seized at the theater there... Uh... We got reports of this large crowd of people shouting, lynch him, am I correct in that? There were... The NBC radio network has canceled all regularly scheduled programs to bring you this continuous coverage of the events surrounding the death of the late President of the United States, John F. Kennedy. We now pause ten seconds for station identification. WLW Radio and the Crosley Broadcasting Corporation join its listeners in an expression of deep sorrow on the death of our president. This is the nation station, WLW, in Cincinnati, your clear channel service. We understand, Oswald, um, 
lost uh, some of what was described earlier as his arrogant air after he had seen the photographs of himself with uh, uh, the rifle that is being held. Uh, do you have any further enlightenment on that? Yes. Uh, he made uh, a statement over in uh, police captain Will Fritz's office to the effect that he wanted a lawyer. He was seeking uh, the lawyer from New York, Mr. Apt, who has uh, represented uh, people with communistic backgrounds, and uh, he appeared to have calmed down some. Tom, we, we go immediately back to Dallas now, and the police chief there with further details on this murder weapon. Chief Curry, I understand you have some new information in this case. Could you relate what that is? Yes, we've just been informed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation that they, the FBI, have the order letter from a mail order house, uh, and uh, this mail, uh, the uh, order was sent to their laboratory in Washington, and the writing on this order was compared with known samples of our suspect Oswald's handwriting and found to be the same. This order was for the rifle? This order was for the rifle to a mail order house in Chicago. It was the return address was to Dallas, Texas, to the post office box under the name of A. Hydell, H-I-D-E-L-L. This is the post office box of our suspect. It was, this gun was mailed parcel post on March the 20th, 1963. I understand he left Dallas shortly after this and, and didn't come back until, I think, about two months ago. Do you know... Uh, again, on what date this rifle was ordered, and are you able to link it definitely as the rifle which you confiscated at the school book depository? That we have not done so far. If the FBI has been able to do it, we, uh, uh, I, I have not been informed of it yet. We do know that this man ordered a rifle of the type that uh, was used in the assassination of the president from this mail order house in Chicago, and the FBI has definitely identified the, the writing as that of our suspect. On another subject, I understand you have photographs of the suspect Oswald with a rifle like that used. Could you describe that picture? Well, this is a picture of Oswald standing, uh, facing a camera with a rifle in his hand, which is very similar to the rifle that we, uh, uh, have in our possession. He also had a pistol strapped on his hip. He was holding two papers in his hand, which one of them seemed to be the worker. The other says, uh, be militant, or I don't know whether that was headlines or the name of the paper. How much did the gun cost from the mail order house? I understand the gun was advertised for $12.78, I believe. Have you received any results on the ballistics test conducted on the gun and on Oswald? They're going to be favorable. I have, don't have a formal report yet. But you are sure at this time they will be favorable? Yes. Do you feel now that you have the case completely wrapped up, or are you continuing? We will continue as long as there's a shred of evidence to be gathered. We have a strong case at this time. I believe you said early this afternoon that you have a new development which does wrap up the case the first time you said that the case definitely is secure. Is that correct? That was this morning. This additional evidence it just makes a stronger case but this is not the same evidence you're referring to then no that's true will you be willing to say what that evidence was no sir i don't wish to reveal it it might jeopardize our case thank you very much chief jesse curry of the dallas police department chief curry describing the murder weapon as a twelve dollar seventy eight cent gun purchased from a mail order house in chicago we are standing by in washington Another recap now as we look back over the events of the past few hours surrounding the death of the late president, John Kennedy, to receive a hero's burial Monday in Arlington National Cemetery just across the Potomac River from Washington. As commander-in-chief of the nation's armed forces, the president had abundant right to a grave in the honored military cemetery, uh, both a veteran and a war hero as well. During World War II, as a Navy lieutenant, II, John Kennedy commanded a PT boat, commanded a PT boat. Uh, that was rammed and wrecked by an enemy craft. It was through his heroic efforts that his men were rescued. Burial to follow a pontifical requiem mass at Washington's 
St. Matthew's Cathedral, at noon on Monday, Washington time. Monday to be a day of mourning across the nation and around the world. President Lyndon B. Johnson has appealed to the American people to go to their respective houses of worship for prayer. He also invited all people everywhere to share this nation's grief and to join in the morning. The new president will make a major policy speech before both houses of Congress on Wednesday. The White House announced the speech will be delivered at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today, President Johnson held his first cabinet meeting and proclaimed Monday a day of mourning for the dead president. The half-hour cabinet meeting in the White House opened with a minute of silent prayer for Mr. Kennedy. In his proclamation, Mr. Johnson asked Americans to pay tribute to President Kennedy on Monday, the day of his funeral. He also ordered the federal government to close its offices on that day. Mr. Johnson met with two former presidents today, Harry Truman and Dwight Eisenhower, and he consoled the widowed First Lady and the two Kennedy children. It's expected President Johnson will pursue the legislative policies of his predecessor, any changes in his policies are not expected to show up for January when he makes his first State of the Union message. It is expected uh, President Johnson's congressional background will put him on a solid footing in getting his th uh, programs through Congress. Some observers are saying he might be able to get Congress to act on the programs of President Kennedy, which currently are being held back. Congress to meet for regular sessions Tuesday and in a joint session Wednesday to hear the new president. The House Speaker, John McCormick, says the House will work briefly on Wednesday and adjourn then until Friday after Thanksgiving. Senate Democratic Majority Leader Mike Mansfield says the workload might mean the Senate will have to meet Thursday. More on the man now being held in Dallas, Texas, in connection with the assassination of the president, 24-year-old Lee Harvey Oswald. In an interview in New York, lawyer John App was asked tonight about undertaking the defense of Oswald. He said, quote, I don't see how it would be possible to undertake a case of this magnitude. He said he had not been asked to do so, and he added, it would have to be a very serious decision. Apt went on to say, I have a very heavy litigation schedule. He declared that assuming the Oswald case would not be fair to his other clients. 24-year-old Lee Harvey App being held by Dallas Authorities on three charges, Lee Harvey Oswald being held in Dallas on three charges, the assassination of President Kennedy, the murder of a Dallas policeman, an attempted murder on the life of Governor John Connolly of Texas. Continuous coverage coming your way on the events surrounding the death of the president. This is Russ Ward, NBC News, New York. As you know, the NBC radio network has canceled all regularly scheduled programs to bring you this continuous coverage of the events surrounding the death of the late president of the United States, John F. Kennedy. We will be on the air with this continuous coverage until 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. We will begin our continuous coverage on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and on Monday morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is the nation station, WLW, in Cincinnati, your clear channel service.